bruh. Big bruh moment. <clears throat> Let's find a song before I start today's stream. <sighs> today's stream is a doozy. All right, hold up. Uh, let's get stuff all you want. Good for now. It's off. All right, cool. Great, 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 great. Uh, where's that song? Okay. I found the song. This would be great if I could just turn my audio down, turn my volume down on my um, computer even a tiny bit. I can't press the freaking button for some reason. Why is my. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to deal with that then. Media source. Okay. No, go away, Cortana. I don't know why I still have her here. Download rain. Right. Oh God. Oh, I forgot about this. Hold up. Okay, get rid of this. This please. Yes, I also want to be able to hear it. Ow, 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 ow. Okay. Alright. Today is a Kind of day. I have nothing to do. Try to f buy time until Friday when I can, or Saturday when I can finally get around to buying Elden Ring. And so until then, um, hold on one second. First thing I'm gonna talk about. First things first. Media source. What the world went down last night? Uh, Oscars. This actually was spawned the stream, the Oscars. Um, first of all, let's talk about that whole Will Smith thing. That was wild. <laughs> that was wild. It's hilarious to me. Um, yeah, it. 
It's quite possibly the funniest thing I've seen in a while and a bit. Um, but what really, ugh, what really spawned this stream today is, um, It was the fans choice oh, wait, one second fan favorite find that. not the fan favorite award because they want they voted army of the dead but that technically does have something to do with it that's funny that's that that in itself is funny because cinderella beat out spider-man no way home and <laughs> that is hilarious cinderella is a horrible movie by the way but um fan favorite cheer moment right The best fan favorite cheer moments, like some um, nominees were a song from a movie that I've never even heard of before. Um, Bullet Time from The Matrix, which Matrix is my all time favorite movie. However, I don't think that is a cheer cheer moment. That's just a jaw dropped, insane moment. Uh, three Spider Man and No Way Home, that's great. That's a great moment. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, Avengers Assemble from Endgame. And then. The re the winner, which I fully agree with, uh, Flash entering the Speed Force in Zack Snyder's Justice League. And, um, that scene, I think it's just, when it comes to, like, imp not, like, impact, like, cultural impact, not that, but visual effects and what it meant for the story of the movie and also behind the scenes and what had happened with the original Justice League, this deserved to win, honestly. Zack Snyder deserved to win. But then, that's how it spawned. Um, that right there is how it spawned a argument that I got in. So, one second, I'm trying to check this thing. Alright, that's on there. Oh, let me find that. Is it there? 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 Alright, it's there. Good. Um, I, I, had, I had a conversation with a friend on Discord about this is the entire thing. My thing, I said that Zack Snyder's just sleep deserved it, deserved it. And then I went on to call Endgame not even a top 5 MCU movie. Obviously, I got in a complete, uh, in an argument about this. Um... And I'll explain my reasonings when we get there. But today what we're doing is ranking hold 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 uh it's it's window capture. Here we go. Here we go. Today we are ranking All of them, <laughs> all of the comic book movies, starting with the DCEU. Now, the DCEU doesn't include Joker and the Batman. If they did, uh, genuinely, like, yeah, mainline DCEU. So, no Joker, no the Batman, no Green Lantern, and no the Dark Knight trilogy. So, now let me change this. Perfect. Oh. Alright. Just going in alphabetical order. I have my water. I'm ready to go. First up. Uh, Aquaman. Aquaman, to me, was a movie that was extremely campy. <laughs> it was... There's a lot of there's a lot of jokes. Like they, they they know this is a silly character, because it, it's literally a guy that can talk to fish, but they made it into an amazing story. Um, that is Black Panther esque. Now I know the comic book origins, blah blah blah, they're not at all similar, but this story 
felt Black Panther Rask, it doesn't help that it came out in the same year as Black Panther. But it still made a billion dollars, but overall, still a phenomenal movie. Um, I can't wait for the second movie. Uh, the whole Amber Heard thing, I, I'm going to try and not let it, try to not let it affect my experience. I'm just going to go in with an open mind and see what happens. So, Aquaman, I put in amazing. Aquaman was great. And maybe I might move it as we go further along. Batman v Superman. Okay. Uh, what a movie. Um, oh. Okay, I'm going to put this over here because this makes my life a bit easier. Uh, bad. Uh, the original version, bad. Um, it was just a nightmare. There was just, there's, there's a lot going on. And... See, I, I can't speak on some of these movies because I haven't seen them in such a long time. Like, I refuse to watch a Batman v Superman theatrical cut because there was a lot missing and a lot... There was a lot missing. It, it's just, yeah, you could tell WB decided to cut everything from the theatrical cut. Uh, the theatrical cut. That's why the Ultimate Edition goes up a good. The Ultimate Edition was phenomenal. I mean, not, okay, no. It wasn't phenomenal. It was really good. It was better than the original, but I wouldn't say it was, like, in my opinion, better than Aquaman. I would rather watch, if I had a, the choice to watch a version of Batman v Superman, it would be the Ultimate Edition. Ultimate Edition didn't feel like an incomplete movie, in my opinion. Next up, Birds of Prey. I'm going to put this in good. Same tier as Batman v Superman. So, Birds of Prey, right? I think was just a fun turn your brain off movie, which I could pretty much describe um, from another movie we'll get to later. It's just a fun turn your brain off movie that if you like dark edgy humor, you'll get a kick out of this. It, it is it's so good. Um, Harley Quinn as a character just gets more screen time, more love than the original Suicide Squad. Um, you know, breaking away from the Joker and all that. It, it's, it's, it was just a blast to watch from start to finish. Alright, now, there are some movies that I will not be talking about with too much because I just can't stand to talk about them way too much. Justice League is one of them. <laughs> the original Justice League is some trash. It is bad. Uh, what Joss Whedon did to this movie, um... I just can't believe that this existed and we thought that this was like the uh, at first when I watched this I was like this is a fine decent movie but then I learned about more and more what happened and then I go watch the Snyder Cut which we'll get to later man it it, it was a train wreck on all accounts of the word Man of Steel uh good Man of Steel was really good. Um, actually, I'm going to move Batman v Superman up to meh. Because I have something for bad. I really, really did enjoy Man of Steel. And I know a lot of people didn't. It's, it just, for me, it just portrays Superman as a character and being a, essentially a god. And you know, how it feels to be an orphan growing up in this world and then having to live among mortal mortals that don't understand you, don't go through the same things as you do. It's like, it, you're right, it feels like an alien. And that's why I kind of um, relate with Man of Steel a lot because Man of Steel really does make it so that you understand what being an alien feels like. And I know that I definitely know what that feels like being a person of color or a black person, if you will. Um, I go to, you know, I go to amusement parks all the time and, you know, out in Ohio and Florida. And I just feel so out of place there because I see a whole bunch of people that just don't look like me. I'm just like, I don't know if I should belong here. That's what Man of Steel did. Man of Steel perfectly emphasized that. And then the being the God thing and what happened at the end of that movie 
translate it perfectly into Batman vs. Superman. That's why I really do enjoy Man of Steel. Shazam. Just wow. Just Shazam was my favorite DCEU movie. Was. Was. Um, you know what? No, I'm moving down to Amazing. Top of Amazing. Shazam was phenomenal. I love Shazam. Shazam was, you know, another turn your brain off um, kind of movie to have fun. Zachary Levi was phenomenal in the role. Asher Angel did great as young Billy Batson. And then the Shazam family at the end. Uh, it's, it's just so good. I can't wait to, for um, Fury of the Gods, which comes out later this year. Yay. Suicide Squad, stay away from me and my family. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this movie. I don't, need to, I don't need to say much about this movie. It was just bad. It's bad. If you watch the movie, you'll know. Wonder Woman 1984. Uh, let's talk about Wonder Woman first. Um, this is another movie that's going in amazing. I loved this movie when I first watched it. I thought this movie was like one of the greatest comic book movies I'd ever watched, and I still stand by that. Um, it's one of those movies that I could just constantly revisit over and over and over again and have a fun time with each and every single time. I love the characters, I love the story. I think Ares was kind of a CGI noise nightmare, but other than that, um, it was just a really good, really, really good origin story. Um, I don't know why people say Gal Gadot is a, isn't a good actor, because she is. However, I haven't seen her in too much other stuff besides like maybe two or three other movies. So, uh, Wonder Woman 2017, great movie. Wonder Woman 1984, that's sucked. Um, they single-handedly ruined Cheetah. Uh, Cheetah was bad as a CGI mess. Um, I think that one scene in the desert area, I forget where it was, that was bad. That just didn't need to be in the movie. And I think they said something like, what are we making while well, making that scene? I don't remember. I don't remember if that if it was that movie or another movie. Wonder Woman 1984 is just an all-around bad movie. Um, it's not as bad as these two. Because it did have some um, redeeming qualities. Uh, Pedro Pascal as Maxwell Lord. Uh, that was phenomenal, definitive casting. Um, it, that, honestly, that's probably the one positive thing I could bring up about this movie. Because they shouldn't have brought Chris Pine back. Uh, they should have just led Diana her own way. And they butchered Cheetah. And it just didn't make for a good movie. Next up, um, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, just wow. <laughs> this movie is phenomenal. It's, it's great. It looked great. Um, it's, its score was amazing. The, the plot was amazing. The villains were great. Um, some of the cameos with the uh, Green Lantern card at the start and John Stewart, which he got cut out for some reason, as well as Martian Manhunter, um, and then bring it back the way they bought back Superman. It was just way better than it was in uh, Justice League, and the f fact that it's a four-hour movie got to expand on the stories of people like Cyborg, um, Barry, and you know how he met Iris, which um, covered would be very important in the Flash movie. You know, Cyborg, Barry and Iris, uh, Aquaman, um, developed Batman and Wonder Woman's characters even more, and bought back Superman in a way that was extremely satisfying. Suicide Squad, also just, uh, just wow. Um, I adored this movie because James Gunn, WB gave James Gunn the Suicide Squad and said, just do whatever you want, and that's what he did. He made it. I can't say campy. He made it edgy, dark, dark, funny, and action-packed. And that's just what this movie is. It's like another turn-your-brain-off movie, but at the end of the day, the characters like Blood, um, Bloodsport 
and Ratcatcher 2 and Peacemaker and Rift Flag all have phenomenal stories that intertwine with each other. Of course, you know, Peacemaker kills Rick Flag at the end. Um, that essentially leads into his own show, which I will get to because I'm probably not going to be writing that. And then, you know, the relationship between Bloodsport and Ratcatcher 2. Um, King Shark is just amazing. I We love King Shark, and overall it's just a phenomenal movie. I would not mind if James Gunn did more of these series or Suicide Squad movies. Finally, Peacemaker, a movie that, uh, show that I'm not going to finish. I'm not going to write because I haven't finished it. Um, from the first like three or four episodes that I saw, it was really good, but I never got back to finish it yet. I probably would put it in, like amazing or just well, but I haven't finished it, so I can't give it the proper recognition. And uh, yeah, that is the DCEU ranking, of course, without Joker, the Batman, Green Lantern. I mean, my favorite comic book movie of all time before the Batman was Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's like, if I were to put, you know, all of these, I think I put Joker on top of Amazing, Green Lantern to stay away from me and from my family. The Dark Knight trilogy, Dark Knight Rises, like maybe good. Batman Begins and Amazing, Dark Knight and, and Just Wow, the Batman at top of Just Wow and all that. So, yeah. Uh, about twenty eight minutes in. Uh, oh. Hold up. Next up, we have MCU. And so, this one says uh, MCU, MCU related TV shows. So that's why they say, you know, and that's why stuff like Jessica Jones and Daredevil and stuff like that's on here. So, there's a lot on here that I just haven't seen. So, the like Agent Carter, Cloak and Dagger, Inhumans, even though I know, I know, they, they will put that, uh, don't watch, I haven't watched, Agent Carter, Inhumans, Cloak and Dagger, even though I'm always positive, it, from what I've heard, it, humans would go in F, but, um, you know. Uh, this, uh, Ace of Shield, Runaways, and I'll talk about Punisher. That's the stuff that I haven't seen. Now let's on to the stuff that I have seen. Let's start with Jessica Jones. Um, I've only seen season one. And I heard season two was bad and season three was great. Um, it was it was phenomenal. Um, Jessica's backstory had to deal with Kill, Killgrave and um, the abusive tendencies of Killgrave. It was just, it was great. I, I, this is another one I... Now this is another... Um, Hard one because I haven't seen the second, third season. Um, so like things like that, Jessica Jones, I'll have to put at the bottom. Same thing with The Punisher because I'm currently watching it right now. From what I've, I am think on episode two or three, it is great so far, but I have to finish it first. So, all right, let me grab my phone because that's actually what, that's what the thing that has the um, rankings of my favorite comic book movies ever. Because then I could probably gauge my Marvel stuff. I could go from F to, um, A.
Next, all right. First up, at the very bottom, we have. Door of the Dark World. Uh, this is a movie that just kind of bumbled its villain. Its villain was just not good. Um, it decided it wanted to change the genre of the movie multiple different times throughout. It was too dark for its own good, honestly. And, I mean, it's named The Dark World. And it's just it's just a bad movie. I think this is the one movie that everybody in the MCU can unanimous, unanimously agree that it's bad. However, I saw a tweet the other day that said, um... I genuinely can't believe that Thor The Dark World... The people think that Thor The Dark World is better than Thor Ragnarok. And I saw it. And... Yeah. It... <sighs> yeah, it's... Yeah. It's a bad movie. <laughs> it's just... End of the day, bad movie. I saw that on one tweet, and it was I was just like, I am shocked at why people think the Dark World for the Ragnarok, but that's fine. Next up, I'm just going to be in order, so. Uh, I don't have any of the Marvel TV shows, so I have to put those on accordingly. Did I miss it? Here it is. Iron Man 3. I hated this movie. <laughs> I hated this movie with a passion. <laughs> it's like the first 45, like the first minutes, couple of minutes of the movie are decent. The last couple of minutes of the movie are good. And then the middle half of the movie is just <laughs> god awful, man. It's bad. The whole thing with the kid and. The Mandarin, I I can't be bothered with this movie. I can't stand it. Um, Shame, it's just a movie that I can't see myself rewatching anymore. Next up. Okay. I also don't have any of the um, MCU TV shows. I have to put those on accordingly. But none of those are on here yet, so it's fine. Uh, Hulk. This this just the case. This is just the case of the MCU before it was the MCU. Um, was it actually made by um, Marvel Studios? Because Hulk is technically not owned by Marvel Studios, but blah blah blah. Um, or at least at the time, I don't know how it is now. I mean, compared to the other movie, I think it had a good story, but compared to the other movies, it's just not good. Like as a Hulk movie, it is a really good movie. But as an MCU movie, it is bottom of the barrel. All right, next, Iron Man Two. I have a soft spot for this movie because this movie is. Um, I grew up with this movie. This is the first MCU movie that I ever saw. I grew up with it. I've seen it maybe thirty or forty times at this point. Um, I think I just I have a soft spot. I think that. Uh, Putting aside the nostalgia, Whiplash was not a good villain. Like, J Justin Hammer was a great villain, but Whiplash, I think, could have been executed a bit better. Um, the whole Tor Tony versus Rhodey thing was not great. Uh, Black Widow was great, but then the way that this movie... This movie was just, I feel like, at the end of the day, them tried to set up for the Avengers. Um, halfway through the movie. Um, yeah... I think this was the movie that Tony also had to deal with his illness, and that wasn't a great plot line because that was the Avengers setup. So, uh, overall, not a not a good movie, but not as bad as these three. Next up, that's a golf one. Wow, well, this one, Iron Fist. I think this is the last one in the um, F tier category. This show was bad. <laughs> this show was bad. Um, 
Finn Jones, I think, is a decent actor, but his portrayal as Danny Rand in Iron Fist and Defenders, which I'll get to, probably in the next tier, actually, um, it's just not good. <laughs> it's, it, it, it is absolutely horrendous. Um, the characters aren't good. I think uh, Jessica Henwick, Jessica Henwick, whatever her name is, she was like the one good character, the one character that I could, st I, I could actually watch. Other than that, it's like, like the, the first half of the show is like just Danny Rand trying to prove that he's actually Danny Rand, and then after that it just kind of gets kind of cheesy. The fight scenes don't look great; they look kind of awkward, and. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it, it's just not a, it's just not a good movie at the end of the day, and it's unfortunate because I not a movie a TV show. And unfortunately, I think season two is better than season one, but um, Iron Fist is a really good comic book character, and I'd love to see more of them done right. All right, I'm gonna do a quick. I uh, I actually I can't do a quick fire round, um, so I'm gonna do a quick fire. Uh, where is it? Guardians 2. It's bad. It's that's all that needs to be said about it. Um, quick fire. I can't I have to stop the quick fire for a moment. Captain Marvel. I have a lot of issues with this movie, honestly. Um not currently in my regular browser. Alright, Captain Marvel, a movie in which I genuinely just think that better writing and this movie could have been like A or S tier. I think Brie Larson did better than, I mean, I, I, it gets a lot of hate, a lot of that has to do with the fact that Brie Larson said some stuff before and after the movie that came out that just wasn't the right things to say, but um... Straight up, this is just a movie in which better writing and a better and a better storytelling could have made this movie phenomenal. But I know Captain Marvel just came up, comes off as a snarky like brat because like yeah, she's taught taught to not show her emotions, but you know that doesn't it doesn't give you a reason to be snarky. You just, don't talk, in it? Because I know a lot of people said, like, why can't Captain Marvel be snarky, but Tony Stark can't? Because Tony Stark has a reason. He's a billionaire. He's a playboy. At least he has a reason to act like that. Alright, next up, let's do another quick fire. Um, Ant-Man the Wasp. And... Black Widow. Uh, Black Widow, I think, just made some questionable decisions when it came to um, the villains and Taskmaster, and the CGI was god awful. <laughs> but also, it's just not as good as the other movies on this list. Ant Man the Wasp. Um, I think a lot of it, a lot. Of, this just felt like a Wasp solo movie at the end of the day, because a lot of it had to do with. You know, Avengers Endgame set up, and um, you know that one villain that just wasn't very good. So, I mean, it's hard because I haven't seen a lot of these movies in a while. Last time I watched Ant Man and the Wasp had to have been a good two years ago. Right now, it's kind of very hard to judge these movies. All right. Oh, last one I'm missing. Defenders. <laughs> this movie felt... Not movie. This um, TV show felt as if 
they it was like they tried to do Avengers, but the first four episodes, I mean the first four episodes were decent if you're trying to get past the fact that Danny Rand is constantly saying I'm the immortal Iron Fist and blah blah blah. You try to get past that. Um, the first four episodes are decent. The last four episodes just kind of fall apart because the hand was never a were never villains that came off as you know threatening or I mean they were threatening but they they never came off as like good emotional um, sympathetic villains. Those that just wasn't them, <laughs> and that's probably why they the end of Defenders leading into Daredevil Season 3. Um, that whole scene with Daredevil and Elektra, which ironically, Elektra was probably the best character in that show. Um, just wasn't all too great, honestly. It, was, it, it did bring the show down a bit. Alright. B tier. Eternals. <laughs> Man, this movie was so... Bit, I have a lot of issues with this movie. At the end of the day, I don't think it's as bad as um, I mean, come, excluding the TV shows, I don't think it was as bad as these eight down here, but Eternals was so, it's just not good. Um, I would even dare, I'd even move Eternals down to E. Funny. Um, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail with this one because I made a quick review on it and you, you want to see that, you can go check it out on my YouTube channel. Um, Eternals had a lot of story issues. Um, I mean story issues, I mean they tried to press what could have been like a eight, seven or eight hour um, MCU TV series into a two and a half hour movie. The characters just, they, they didn't get enough time for them to be impactful and emotional. Um, I swear, like, I, I'm t I'm, all I'm saying is if Sprite has a really good story, but if they just put more um, effort into her, uh, she, everything that she went through at the end, she would have deserved. She probably would have deserved it, but with the movie that we have, she does. She doesn't. She doesn't deserve it. I don't even know why it's a really good story. I mean, Sprite has a decent story. I mean, she doesn't deserve what she gets at the end. So, all right, quick fire, because I don't want to be here for too forever. Age of Ultron. Um, end of the day, Joss Whedon's Joss Whedon. This movie is has a really good ending. Was the, one of the best final fights in the entire end MCU. Um, at the end of the day, WandaVision did make the show better because if it was for WandaVision, this show, I mean, not this movie would probably be in the middle of ear easier. But WandaVision made it better. Okay. Um, Thor and Captain America the First Avenger. Both really good movies, um, really good origin stories in their own right. Not too much to say about them. Um, honestly, these movies are here because compared to the others, it's just, it, it isn't great um, compared to the others. But overall, I think they're really good origin stories to start up, start the characters with and lead them into adventures. I'm stumbling on my words, my bad. It's <laughs> It's been a long day. I'm tired. <sighs> Next up, um, I'm going to put Luke Cage. Season 2 was fine. But season the first half of Season 1 was amazing. And then the second half just fumbled it. The moment they killed all Cottonmouth. Luke Cage season two, just it fell to pieces. It was it was just shambles from there on out. It was like it was like they pulled the they pulled the thing. Luke Cage first half of season one it as a Jenga tower. You have the thing, the best part of the show holding up the Jenga tower, and then the moment you kill off that car kill off Cottonmouth being the table, you pull the table off. You pull the table from underneath the tower, and the tower comes crashing down. That's what Luke Cage was, and I think it's a great con concept. The actor, the plane that was that, ugh, English man. The actor that was playing Luke Cage, phenomenal, um, phenomenal defenders. But um, in his own show, um, it, it it was just a shambles. 
All right. Uh, next. This is where I get to the stuff that might get me killed if I showed it to any people. I no. Um, Ant Man, really good origin story. Um. Uh, actually, wait, hold. Put one of the D tier. It's my least favorite of the MCU shows. Honestly, it doesn't. I really hope they don't do the thing of crossing it over into the um. Did I say DCU? I meant to say MCU. I'm crossing it over into the MCU. They don't really need to do it. it I really hope they don't. <laughs> This is my least favorite of the shows, and honestly, it just did, it didn't do much for me. This is the reason why it took me like six, seven months to finally get around to watching it. All right, Ant Man, I brought it up. Far from home. I enjoyed this movie more than most. I think that Mysterio was a great villain. I think the whole thing with the Gladys was the Gladys glasses were kind of. Um, the setup of um, Peter and MJ was great, but the same, but like I said, the whole glasses thing and Tony Stark, it's like, a, it's like another villain, it's like, this is a formula, this is a kind of a formula thing when it comes to like some of these villains, it's just another villain that had a vendetta on Tony Stark because of Tony Stark, what Tony Stark did, they did the same thing with Spider-Man Homecoming, that's way higher. Um, overall, I think the glasses and Tony Stark and Vanetta thing were, um, bad. The dream sequence was great, but it kind of all just weighs down the uh, movie and brings it down to see. Uh, Doctor Strange. I enjoyed this movie more than most people did. I think the thing with Doctor Strange is that... Um, the villain, very underwhelming. Um, Dormammu, I come to bargain, was great. I think visually this movie looks amazing, and that's why I'm so excited for Multiverse of Madness, because that movie looks amazing visually. But, you know, I think the origin story is great, but at the end of the day, the villain is just terrible. It's a, a villain that, you'll, that you won't remember. The villain of Doctor Strange is like Valkyrie, except I could actually remember Valkyrie's name. <laughs> That's how bad he was. Bam, on the top of Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. That movie, I can't wait for it. Because of how they're going to take, um, where they're going to take Scarlet Witch. Um, I'm not a Scarlet Witch stand. God, no, I can't, I can't stand them. I can't wait to see how they take that character. Um, the Illuminati, I think, I hope that's what they're doing. And then... I genuinely do think it's going to be visually stunning, but also my um, fear for it is that's going to be carried by cameos. I'm really hoping that it's not the case. Because if it is the case, I'm going to be very disappointed. Because this is the one movie that I think could possibly beat out the Batman for my favorite comic book movie of all time. This is the one movie that I think that can do it. All right. Um, next up. Uh oh. Okay. All right. C tier. Okay. This is where life starts to get a bit harder. Oops. Hawkeye. Um, let's put both these here. I put it actually under Hawkeye. I really enjoyed Hawkeye for what it was. Um, I thought Hawkeye was great. I think the return of Vista D'Onofrio as Kingpin was great. Hi Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop was a great performance. Um, but there was just a lot of things that it, the, this show had quite possibly the smallest stakes. I think that's what made made it good. But um. There are some moments that I feel like just didn't need to be there. I think Echo is a terrible villain. <laughs> I think Echo is absolutely horrible. Um, which is why I'm not all too excited for her new show. But, um... Yeah, great thing. Bring it back with Sinofia as Kingpin. Phenomenal. Phenomenal decision. Alright. This is the kind of where I'm just about to start actually making stuff. Okay. Shang-Chi. 
I'm hesitant to bring that down to C tier. I... I don't know, there's something about Shang-Chi. I, I feel like the mo the pacing of this movie was weird. It was so off-putting because... Um, I think the final fight, it getting there and getting through the story was kind of rushed. I can't lie. The final fight was way, way longer than it needed to be. Well, I think the characters are great. I think they didn't... We, Outside of, you know, Shaolin and Shang-Chi, we didn't get to spend enough time with characters like, you know, Katie. That's pretty much the only other, de besides the Ma Mandarin, Mandarin was awesome. The only other good, decent character in that movie, Katie, and we didn't even get to spend time um, with her and or her backstory. Um, one thing I will say, though, it was visually stunning and it was great to see Tim Roth back as Abomination. Okay, um... Hmm. Iron Man. I'm not gonna say much about this movie because I think I have a quick review coming out soon. If not, I've been mistaken for um, something else. It's a really good movie, really good start to the M MCU, and I really love it. It's just compared to the other movies on top of it, it's not my favorite, personally. Um, yeah, it's just very, it's just very unfortunate because I'd rather watch other, all these other movies over Iron Man. Next up, Loki. Now, I will always say this when it comes to movies and TV shows and books. Time travel, I hate it so much. I hate it when for different forms of media do time travel, and that's my thing with Endgame, which I'll get to. Time travel's weird. Time, I, because everybody decides they want to do their different rules of on it, and it just, it's not fun, honestly. Oh no 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 no. no. Uh, yeah, time, time travel is just not, it's just not fun. Um, and I think they did a good job at retconning some of the stuff in Avengers Endgame with time travel. At the same time, they had to explain stuff in order for them to retcon it. That's what they didn't do, but I digress. It was, it's just kind of long. Alright. <sighs> Next up. Uh, Avengers, I think it did a really good job of bringing our heroes together. Um, had an epic final fight. Had a great story overall. It's just another case of compared to the other stuff on this list, it's not as good as them. Um, like if I if I had to if I had to um, choose, I'd probably watch all these. Besides these two, because um, I haven't finished them. But I'd probably choose to watch all of these over the original Avengers. Which leads us to our last... I don't know, our last two movies in the um, B tier. Guardians and Spider-Man Homecoming. Both phenomenal movies in their own right. It's just... Um, One's really funny. One's like a high high schooler being a super a superhero, and how he has to deal with that and deal with the pressure of working with Tony Stark and technically being an Avenger, if you will. The other is like a you know really funny rag like ragtag group of um, misfits. I hate using that word ragtag because it gets used all the time when it comes to these type of movies um, that come together and. Um, Saved the galaxy. They had a great final fight with Ronan's a great villain. Um, Ronan's a great villain. Um, 
the dance off was great and it's just a very enjoyable movie overall. It's just not as good as the others. Next up. Sort of things start to get confusing. WandaVision. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think the first two episodes were not great, but then once you watch the rest of the show, it's like, oh, I understand now. And it just makes those first two episodes great. I love the story of Wanda and Vision and how Wanda becomes the Scarlet Witch and Agatha Harkness and also bringing in Monica Rambo and, you know, setting up for Multiverse of Madness. And it's, it's, it, it, end of the day it is really a show that just sets up for other things because this is a show that did set up two movies at once but I I still really enjoyed it enjoyed my time with it um remember what um, those days in which we would everybody on Twitter would speculate when the world's gonna happen next to WandaVision it was so fun so much fun so good Endgame I, for the love of God, cannot put this movie in the top five. Hold oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, what? Oh, I messed up. One second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, alright, that's good. God damn, that was not on the list. Alright. Endgame was phenomenal. Endgame was just like a really good way to close out the Infinity Saga. However, I have my issues, which is why this stream happened. Um, time travel. <laughs> it makes no sense, man. It, it makes no sense. I've tried to... I almost... Um, <laughs> I almost annihilated my brain this morning trying to figure out the whole time travel was end game. If you don't know, just go look it up because I can't be bothered to explain it. But end game has this whole thing where they, I, I will explain it, they have this whole thing where every decision they make in the past leads into an alternate timeline. So it's like multiverse stuff. But the difference is it's just not good. Honestly, the, the time travel plot is just not good. And. Um, I wish they could have done it better because it's essentially with the whole time travel thing, if you're doing the um, alternate separate um, timelines thing, um, then you kind of mess yourself up with the old cap at the end and you establish in the movie that there's not an absolute point and this is before the TVA was around so the so you can't really use that as an excuse because this movie came out like two years before Loki did. And the whole the old Steve Rogers, he said she just gone back and erased everything. And if there's not an absolute point because you never said it, um, you have it. You have an issue with time travel. <laughs> you essentially just erased a decent amount of your movies and. Unless Steve Rogers assumes a fifth identity, um, and didn't meet himself in the future, then everything would have been fine. But the issue being is that if he was with Peggy for the rest of his life, that would have erased the events of Agent Carter, um, and the founding of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because let's be real, if it wasn't for Steve, Rod Steve Rogers going missing, Peggy, Peggy Carter would probably have never found a S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't know. Um, the events of Captain America first Avengers what led to that and then you wouldn't have movies like Avengers where S.H.I.E.L.D. gathers all these heroes and fights against New York and it's just long it's 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 a lot to explain the more I think about it the more I want to move this um, movie as um, spot down but I'm gonna leave it here I'm trying not to kill my brain over it uh what's next Rat Rock. Um, I actually have to move one of these down when I get to it. Thor Rat Rock. <clears throat> this is a very funny movie and a very great uh, direction to 
take Thorin towards the character. Um, I did not. I what after the after the the colossal utter trash that was stored in the Dark World. I was I did not have high expectations for um, going into Ragnarok, but honestly, this movie was great. It's everything that you could have wanted from the character. It's like they tapped into the funny side a bit more. They tapped into the family aspects of Thor and Loki, um, Hulk, and what <laughs> essentially Hulk's psychological and Bruce Wayne's psychological, not Bruce Wayne, Bruce Banner's psychological um, mental state. And it was just a really good movie overall that um, everybody should go watch. All right, last thing, the A tier. I hate to put it here. As you know, two more things in A tier, actually. Civil War. Um, there's not much to be said about this movie. It's just really good. It is essentially Avengers two point, um, Avengers two point five. But the end with Captain America and Iron Man and Bucky fighting was just amazing because it shows Tony Stark really is human, has a heart, and does get emotional over whether his uh, over um, his parents. And Steve fighting for Bucky, even though I, I don't think he should have, because he was definitely in the wrong, was just phenomenal. It was great. It was a great movie. Last movie, A tier. Hate to put it here, but I'm gonna have to. Black Panther. Um, this is a movie that I think was amazing and S tier up until the end where you watch the CGI of the CGI nightmare that is this movie, that is this final fight, and it just takes away from the experience a lot. Because what's an MCU movie without a final fight, am I right? And um, Black Panther really does take away from it. For, um, that CGI does take away from it. But our S-tier movies, we have an S-tier MCU, we have Infinity War, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Daredevil, and No Way Home. Um, each one of these movies is phenomenal. If any war did a phenomenal job at shocking the um, viewers at the end of the movie and then also setting up the final fight um, in Endgame and the emotions and setting all of that up. Just a phenomenal movie overall. I think it's the most rewatchable out of all the MC movies. Winter Soldier had um, one of the best stories and some of the best action sequences out of all of the um, MCU movies. Um, I can't say just how amazing Winter Soldier is when it came to that. Daredevil, I said this in my quick review. Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio's um, Matt Murdock and Kingpin were amazing. Season 2, Punisher and Elektra, um, John Burton Thaw and Elodie Young um, as Punisher and Elektra were just phenomenal. Um, I can't get over how good Season 3 is and that ending, how just Charlie Cox decided, and Mrs. Benafria put in the performance of their lives. And I really do want them to bring this um, show back because it, it needs another season, let's be real. And that's why I'm hoping that that Daredevil reboot um, rumor is real. No Way Home. Not, another movie that doesn't need to be talked about too much, but it was just a phenomenal movie that brought the end of like Peter Parker actually becoming Spider-Man and becoming the Spider-Man that we all know and love. And um, that ending was um, great. The three Spider-Man scene, phenomenal. Doesn't beat the Speed Force scene, but that's just me. And seeing all those villains, seeing Green Goblin again, Green Goblin, the absolute psychopath, um, phenomenal. So yeah, um, let me take a picture of this. Because I think I'm gonna, um, use, I'm gonna use this. All right, last thing.
Alright, cool. Alright, I'm not gonna talk about each of the movies, I'm just gonna um grab them. I'm gonna um arrange them. So let's go. Um hmm. I wish I included like um, Daredevil in here and stuff because that would have been fun. I'm not gonna put on the. Uh, I'm, I, actually, I am gonna put on the MCU TV show Set Peacemaker. That's the one I haven't seen yet. Which version of BBS is on here? There's only one, so I'm gonna take it as the ultimate edition. Okay. Okay. Thor, First Avenger. And that's about it when it comes to math. Oh, uh, what if? That's when I get to write these three. Um, Ant-Man. Uh, Birds of Prey. Shang-Chi Man of Steel Doctor Strange and Far From Home and next up That's not probably be the Marvel stuff. I think I put okay. Now I put Aquaman down with these guys. So it's uh, Aquaman, Soldier, Hawkeye, Iron Man, Aquaman, Loki.
uh, Avengers, Guardians, Homecoming, Almost Perfect would be the like, second tiers. So, <sighs> WandaVision. Wonder Woman. Alright, this for, this is where stuff starts to get easy to actually have a list of my top ten. So Yeah, okay, no, it's not because I just changed it up. Um I left BBS off. Oops. Uh Where things start to get a bit confusing. Shazam, Black Panther, then all these really, they got here, so this would be No Way Home, Winter Soldier, uh, Suicide Squad, Infinity War, Saga. Alright. Excellent, 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 excellent. Alright, I'm gonna end the stream here. I've talked for too long. I I hate talking for a long. So streams in here stream streaming here. Uh see you. Bye.